All right, let's talk about the mean value property. Um, we've seen it sort of in one direction. We saw that for harmonic functions, uh, it the value at the center of a disk is equal to the average of the values on the circle. And it's actually interesting that this this classifies uh, the harmonic functions as you know any time a continuous function satisfies this property, it is harmonic. And it is much easier to check uh, uh, if you only need to assume continuity and uh, uh, some integral. Um, then the, the the definition, right? And then then the Laplacian uh, being close to zero. Now let's uh, motivate this um, a little. So in in one dimension, I mean, people you don't usually define harmonic functions in one dimension, but we could, and it would again be you know Laplacian equals zero. Now what is Laplacian in one dimension? Well, there's only one variable x, right? So it's the second derivative in x. Now you wouldn't write it in either of these two ways. You would write f double prime is equal to zero, and by basic calculus, this just means that we have an affine linear function. Now, for an affine linear function, it has this this, this mean value property. Uh, it's uh, uh, if uh, a b is any interval, any interval at all, uh, we have that the value of f at the center of the interval is the value of f or the average of the values of f uh, at the two endpoints right so at the boundaries of this uh, of the boundary of this interval right and in fact for any continuous function if you if you have if if you know it satisfies this condition it's not hard to prove that it uh, it has to be affine linear right so Again, it's it's a sort of an easier maybe property to check than uh, than taking the second derivative. Uh, it's interesting that you know we can do the same thing for harmonic function in R two, actually in in any dimension. But uh, uh, let's uh, we're only interested in R two in this course. So here's the theorem. So suppose. Uh, there should be a period over here, right? Uh, sorry. Um, it's uh, so suppose u is open, uh, and let's suppose that f is a continuous function. Then it is harmonic if and only if we get this uh, the, the 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 mean value property for all small enough circles. Uh, and by small enough, I mean that, that for, you know, at every point P, there exists uh, um, uh, some R sub P, capital R sub P, uh, so yeah, this entire disk is in U, but in particular such that for all R smaller than this R sub P, we get the uh, the the mean value property, right? So it's harmonic. It satisfies this. if it satisfies it's, it's harmonic. And moreover, actually, if it's if it's harmonic, we could just choose uh, R sub p to be basically the largest it, it can be. You just choose R sub p such that uh, any R such that R sub p such that uh, um, the entire disk is in you. Right, and so it's not uh, in one direction. This is not a uh, it's not a big deal, and in the other direction, well, y y you're not required to have this property for for all circles, but all small enough circles around uh, a point P. Okay, so let's let's prove one direction, including the moreover. Uh, so suppose that uh, we have a harmonic function, and 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 we have a closed disk that's in U. Now really, R sub p is as large as as we want it, right? Just uh, we're we are assuming that R sub p is is is, is like this. Okay. Now solve the Dirichlet problem in in this disk. 
means I mean we have that the, the boundary is is in you right so we can we can uh, restrict f to the boundary and solve the Dirichlet problem and let's evaluate at p which uh, which is just the um, average of uh, uh, of uh, of f on the circle as we saw before but now the Dirichlet problem the solution of the Dirichlet problem is unique and f is harmonic it's equal to well it's equal to itself on the boundary um, and uh, therefore it is equal to the solution of the Dirichlet problem right because there is only one right so that means that um, that f at p is equal to uh, the average of its values on the circle right okay so we've proved one direction if it's harmonic and actually and we've proved moreover as well uh, that, that you know for any capital R sub P as long as the disk is inside you we have the uh, the mean value property for all little r less than capital R sub P okay so uh, we'll assume this uh, from now on and uh, Let's prove the other direction. So let's suppose that uh, we have uh, this property and let's suppose that we have a, a, a continuous function f. Um, you know, and we have this for, you know, for every p we might get a different r, capital R, but uh, we have some, some r at every p, right? So suppose, suppose that f is continuous and satisfies the mean value property. Um, Let's suppose that we have some some disk. Let's suppose it's a closed disk uh, that's in U. Uh, let's solve the Dirichlet problem with uh, boundary values being equal to uh, f uh, on this big disk, right? Uh, so h is harmonic, and we're gonna try to prove that h is equal to f. We don't know that a priori; it's just continuous. If we prove that f is equal to h on this disk, uh, then we have that f is continuous because this was an arbitrary disk in U. And so, uh, you know, harmonicity is, is local property. So it's, uh, uh, you know, that it's harmonic everywhere, right? Uh, so, so let phi be f minus h. Uh, and we're really trying to show that, that phi is identically zero. Now, phi is continuous because f and h are continuous. Uh, phi is identically zero on the boundary of this big disk, right, on this big circle. And it satisfies uh, the mean value property y because we've just proved that h satisfies the mean value property for, for any r, right? Uh, and f, well, we're assuming that, right? So. Um, you know the average of f minus f is the well is the average of f minus f right <laughs> um, just by linearity of, of the of the integral so so phi satisfies the mean value property so suppose for contradiction uh, that uh, phi attains a maximum at p uh, somewhere in the disk and that this uh, uh, this maximum is bigger than zero, strictly bigger than zero. Uh, so we should get uh, a contradiction out of that, right? Um, well, let X be the set of this disk uh, where, where phi is equal to its maximum, right? Now you can, you can easily show that this is a compact set. It's actually the closed set of the closed disk uh, and it's actually a subset of this this open disk right because as phi is zero right so it's definitely not equal to its maximum on the circle right on the big circle all right so this is a compact set so therefore it's it's a fixed uh distance uh well uh, you know it's, it's a positive distance away from uh, the boundary of this circle so we can assume that p is the point of x that's closest to the boundary and uh, uh, you know there is such a point because because x is compact. Uh, now suppose that uh, we take an r that is less than uh, 
uh, less than capital R of P, uh, which we get from the mean value property. And uh, let's also suppose that uh, the, the circle of radius R is in the disk of uh, radius S around Q. So the circle of radius R around P, right? Well, then what we get, and we'll see a, a, a picture in a moment, um, because P is the closest point to the boundary um, on, on X, somewhere on this circle, um, phi had to have been smaller, right? Uh, and well, because it's it's continuous, it's just, it's smaller than than, than some, some fixed constant, uh, right? Um, uh, that's that's actually strictly less than than, than phi of p. On some whole open set, well, this is the circle. Uh, this is the, this is the uh, picture. So we have the big circle, the small circle, right? X. And well, if this is the further, if p is the furthest, uh, uh, well, it's the closest point to the boundary, right? Well, really the furthest point from Q, uh, then uh, then you know somewhere on this circle, well, we're closer to the boundary, so uh, the phi must be smaller, right? It's continuous. So, well, what does that mean? That that means that if we integrate phi uh, over this this little circle uh, uh, over here, then uh, uh, we must get something smaller than uh, phi of p because that was the maximum of of phi and uh, uh, we know that that phi was actually smaller somewhere on the circle than this maximum right so we must get a strict um, uh, inequality right and that's a contradiction right because uh, we said that, that um, phi satisfies the the mean value property so we were supposed to get an equal sign over here right all right. So, what does that mean? That means that phi is less than or equal to zero. Now, what you could do is you could rerun this argument. Uh, basically, you could you could uh, 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 you know either rerun it with uh, with uh, uh, h minus f, or perhaps uh, you know uh, rerun it with uh, finding the minimum and assuming that it's negative and uh, and you're gonna also get that phi is bigger than or equal to zero. Um, well, what, that, that, what does that mean? That means that phi is equal to zero. That means that f is equal to h on this <coughs> entire disk, and uh, therefore f is harmonic. Oh, and 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 we're done, right? Uh, we finished the proof. Let's look at uh, an application. Um, a quick application of this, uh, which shows, you know, sort of the, the, the idea that, you know, how that, that it, this is easier to check uh, than, than, than the, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this uh, uh, property over here, right, the mean value property, that's, that's easier to check uh, than, uh, um, than differentiating. All right. Um, so, Normally, if I take any twice differentiable functions, uh, and these these are just C two functions, so, so real differentiable functions, not holomorphic, uh, you know, just any real differentiable functions, and just because they converge uniformly to some f, well, that doesn't mean that uh, the the Laplacian uh, of 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 f ends converges to the Laplacian of f, the the limit. I mean. A priori, you don't even know that f is c two. You don't even know that the Laplacian exists, and even if it existed, maybe the 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 the, the sequence of these Laplacians would actually converge to something else, or maybe not converge at all. You can't really tell anything um, uh, from this, just if you know that uh, that uh, f n goes to f uniformly. What you would need is for the second derivatives to go uniformly. Uh, uh, you know, to be able to say that, right? And that's, that's sort of, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's something stronger than, than we're trying to conclude, right? All right, so, uh, so normally you can't do that, but for harmonic function, this works. Um, it's, we can, uh, well, and it's sort of uh, 
um, trivial because then, then it just zero goes to zero, right? But uh, but <laughs> really says that that uh, um, the limit of harmonic functions is harmonic, right? Um, and it's that's not easy to prove uh, by uh, you know, uh, you know by the, the uh, by looking at the, the definition using the Laplacian, right? So let um, let you be an open set, and let's suppose that we have a sequence of harmonic functions, and uh, let's suppose that it uh, converges uniformly on compact sets to some some f. Then uh, f is harmonic. That's the conclusion of this term. That's uh, this is, uh, sometimes called uh, Harnack's first uh, theorem. Uh, this is uh, uh, um, <coughs> this is one of several uh, theorems of Harnack, and you know about harmonic functions. Um, it could just be called Harnack's theorem, or maybe not called anything at all. Uh, this is this is the simpler one, um, but. Um, it basically, it's, it's, it's exactly what we had for for holomorphic functions. So it's kind of expected, right? That uh, you know, for holomorphic functions, uh, uh, once you get uh, that uh, the uh, the uh, you know, have a uniform limit of uh, holomorphic functions, then the limit is holomorphic, right? So we get the same thing for harmonic. So how do we prove this? Well, first, f is continuous because it's a uniform limit of you know. Um, uh, uniform on compact subsets, um, so that's continuous, right? Because f ends are continuous. Uh, now let's suppose that we have a closed disk in U, right? Um, then f sub n, well, it converges uniformly on on the boundary, right? Of this of this little disk, right? Um, it also converges at, at 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 every point. It converges at p as well. Um, but it converges uniformly on this on the circle, right? So, what we can do is well, first we write f of p as the limit of the the functions, and uh, now these are holomorphic. Uh, sorry, harmonic, right? So we have uh, the mean value term, uh, mean mean value property. Sorry, um, and so we have that that that. Uh, Fn at p can be written like this for some some fixed r, right? And uh, now we get that uh, by the uniform convergence on this on this circle, which is where we're integrating over. So this this thing uh, this f f n's converge uniformly in theta. Uh, we can take the limit inside, and uh, we'll get just f inside. And now we have that f at p is equal to this, right? And this was true for all all r, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it was whenever this was true, right? Uh, right. So, all right, so now, so we've checked the mean value property for all, you know, for all small enough radii around p, so, we're done. F is um, harmonic, right? So you can see that that it's it's much easier to check uh, because we don't have to. Uh, f well, I mean, it's it's, it's uh, we need less, right? And it's easier to pass limits past integrals than it is to uh, pass them uh, past um, derivatives. For derivatives, you need a lot more. Uh, so, all right.